How do you build something heavy and permanent in the middle of the ocean? Think about it. Concrete dissolves in water, steel rusts, and workers can't simply walk on the seabed. Yet around the world we see massive bridges, offshore wind farms, and lighthouses standing tall against the waves. So here's the question. How do engineers actually build solid foundations underwater? In this video, we'll uncover the step-by-step -step process from scanning the seabed to pumping out water, sinking giant concrete boxes, and even pouring concrete below the surface without mixing it with water. By the end, you'll see how engineers turn rivers and oceans into the foundation for the world's greatest structures. Construction on land is already difficult, but when a project must be built in the middle of a river, a lake, or the ocean, the challenges multiply. How do you build a bridge tower in deep water? How do you keep concrete from washing away under pressure? And how do you create a dry workspace on the seabed? This video will explain how engineers build strong foundations underwater step by step. We'll cover site investigation of the seabed, foundation techniques like piles, coffer dams, and caissons, underwater concreting using the Tremie method, and finally, how these foundations support massive bridges, turbines, and other offshore structures. Let's begin with the first step, understanding the ground beneath the water. Before any underwater construction begins, engineers need detailed knowledge of the seabed. Without it, the foundation could fail. Two main techniques are used. The first one is cone penetration test, or CPT. A machine lowers a cone-shaped probe to the seabed. The cone is then pushed into the soil. Sensors measure the force required to penetrate the friction on the cone sides. If penetration resistance is low, the soil is weak. If resistance is high, the soil is dense or rock. By recording resistance versus depth, engineers create a soil resistance graph. This tells them the depth of strong layers and helps decide how deep piles or other foundations must go. And the second one is Seismic Reflection Survey. Since CPT only checks one point at a time, engineers use a seismic survey for wider coverage. A ship releases controlled sound waves into the water. The waves travel down, penetrate layers, and reflect back. Hydrophones record the returning signals. From this data, Engineers map the seabed layers across a large area. They can see whether bedrock is shallow, deep, or irregular. With this investigation complete, engineers know where and how to build the foundation. Underwater foundations must resist vertical loads from the structure, lateral loads from currents, waves, and earthquakes, uplift forces caused by buoyancy, to handle this, engineers use one of three main methods, pile foundations, coffer dams, or caissons. Method one, pile foundations. Pile foundations are widely used for bridges, offshore turbines, and piers. Large hollow steel pipes are driven deep into the seabed. This is done with vibratory drivers machines that create controlled vibrations. Vibrations reduce soil resistance, allowing the pile to sink without bending. Once the pile reaches bedrock or a strong soil layer, water inside is removed. Reinforcement bars are placed. The pile is filled with concrete. Result, a strong column firmly anchored into the seabed. Multiple piles can support massive loads. Pile foundations are ideal in deep water where coffer dams would be impractical. Method two, coffer dams. 
A cofferdam is a temporary dry enclosure built underwater so workers can build the foundation in the open. Interlocking steel sheet piles are driven vertically into the seabed, forming a closed ring or rectangle. Vibratory hammers insert the piles. Tongue and groove joints lock them together. Pumps remove water inside the enclosure. Bracing systems with steel tie rods are installed to resist ocean pressure. Now workers have a dry working space to build foundations as if on land. Challenges At shallow depths, up to 6 meters, single-wall cofferdams with seals like rubber gaskets and bitumen protings work. At greater depths, up to 12 meters, double-wall cofferdams are used, soil and gravel are packed between two steel walls for extra strength and reduced leakage. Once the permanent foundation is complete, the cofferdam is dismantled. Method 3. Caissons Caissons are large permanent structures used for massive bridge piers or offshore platforms. Types include open caissons, hollow boxes open at the bottom, sunk by excavation inside, box caissons, large concrete blocks built on land, floated to site, and sunk by filling them with water and concrete. Pneumatic caissons, workers enter through pressurized chambers to excavate below water. Caissons provide extreme durability and can be sunk to extreme depths. Even after securing an enclosure, one major challenge remains, how to pour concrete underwater without it washing away. The solution is the tremi method. A long tremi pipe is lowered from above the water to the seabed. The bottom of the pipe is sealed with a plug. Concrete is poured into a hopper at the top of the pipe. As the pipe fills, pressure pushes out the plug, releasing dense concrete at the bottom. The concrete spreads horizontally, pushing water out of the way. The pipe is slowly raised, but always kept embedded in fresh concrete. This ensures continuous concrete flow. No mixing with water, a solid, watertight seal. Special anti-washout admixtures are added to the concrete. These chemicals keep cement particles from dispersing in water, ensuring strength. Once water is sealed out and concrete has set, the actual foundation can be constructed. Drilling into bedrock inside piles or caissons placing reinforcement cages, filling with high-strength concrete, repeating from multiple piles or sections. The goal is always the same, to transfer loads safely into the strong bedrock below. In bridge construction, for example, piles or caissons support massive towers. Towers carry suspension cables. Cables hold the bridge deck, which carries vehicles and trains. Every part relies on the underwater foundation. One critical issue is hydrostatic pressure. According to Bernoulli's principle, water naturally flows from high pressure to low pressure. When water is pumped out of a cofferdam, pressure outside is higher than inside. Without reinforcement, sheet piles would collapse inward. To prevent failure, bracing systems and tie rods provide lateral support. Dewatering is done gradually, never all at once. Pumps remain active to manage leaks until permanent sealing is complete. These techniques are used in many projects worldwide. Bridges, suspension and cable stayed bridges depend on underwater piers anchored by piles or caissons. Example, the Golden Gate Bridge Towers rest on caissons. Offshore wind turbines require pile foundations to withstand wave and wind forces. Lighthouses and jetties are built on solid underwater bases for stability. Dams and locks use cofferdams for dry construction zones. Each project adapts the same core methods to local soil conditions, depth, and loads. Underwater construction is one of the most demanding fields of civil engineering. The process begins with geotechnical investigation of the seabed using CPT and seismic surveys. Then, engineers select the right method pile foundations for deep waters, cofferdams for shallower zones, or caissons for massive structures. Through a combination of science, technology, and precision, engineers turn oceans and rivers into solid ground. That's the end of this video about underwater construction. 
like, share, and subscribe for more amazing engineering. Comment your next topic idea below.